How's it going everybody? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today's video, we do something different with this school bus. What we're going to do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's find out. Now the idea for this, I was wanting to make kind of a, you know, this body style and everything is reminiscent of what was back in the 60s. And because of that, I want to kind of make like, for lack of better terms, a hippie van or hippie bus, I'm sorry. You know, I want it to be all kinds of different colors, maybe put a big peace sign on top or something, you know, hand drawn with a Sharpie, maybe one on the sides or something, you know, I don't know. But after I got this out of the pack, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that or not, because here's the problem. The top is metal. The side is plastic. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. This might be an ultimate fail video. The bottom, I really don't have any plans for it. I'm leave the wheels on there too, just because. And... I don't know because it looks like it's a colored plastic I don't know let's get it apart and we'll find out if it's a fail it's a fail right and by the way acetone will take the lines and stuff off of your mat so be very careful with it okay so let's get us some oil put a drop of oil on there just so it drills better. Anytime you drill or cut anything, if you put oil on it, it just does a lot better. It cools a bit, plus it lubricates it. Get our bits out. And go to town. This might be a fail. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. No turning back now. That should be deep enough for the front one. That should be deep enough for the back one. And the back one's recessed, so kind of a pain to get to. And typically with this, it only takes one or two rounds. And it comes, it takes the whole head of the rivet right off. So be careful with it. I actually might should have used a smaller, smaller one, but that's okay. That should be that for that. Yep, look at that. Comes right apart. Alright, so we're not going to do anything with the base. We might tape off the wheels and paint it. I don't know just yet. But yep, that is a plastic as a world so what I may end up having to do is mm, put it in together like that and dipping the whole thing as one or I may have to just paint this one color and then just leave it just like that like a flat black or something I don't know we'll figure it out but we still have to drill this out deep enough for the screws so let's see what we got Uh, 
I wish all Hot Wheels had posts that big. Wow. Should be far enough on that one. Should be far enough on that one, and there's one way to know for sure. And that is to see if a screw will go in it. Let's go deeper. Deeper on that. That's the front. deeper on both of them and it's always good to check because you don't really want to drill down deeper than you need to plus you run, run the risk of breaking this drill bit if you get too far because it can, might come off the side or just all kind of craziness can happen so another dab of oil we'll drill it out some more Let's recheck. Oh yeah, that's plenty deep enough. This is that one. Now what I'm going to do is take my file and fix this post, knock off any edges so that when we put it back together it'll go in the holes. Like I said, this just makes it to where it goes back in the base better. Just make it that reassembly so much easier you don't have to do it you can get it together but with these being plastic bases and everything we really don't want to put them in any more stress than they have to be because they sure don't make them like they used to knock off any sharp edges And that is all there is to that. Now many ask what that pan is for. 
And what that is, and what it is for is, I bought it at the Dollar Tree, just a metal pan, so that I could put my bases and stuff in it as I drill it. And that keeps shavings from getting all over the desk, the work area, you know, because I'm, you're always touching ass, you're putting rags on it and everything, so you don't want shavings in your hands, you don't want them getting in your rags, and you wipe your, your finished paint job or anything like that, so that's what that's for. Well, let's put this in the North Carolina red clay. Because here in North Carolina, after it rains for a day or so, it's just like this. But then it goes. And I've been asked what I use. This is citrus strip. You can get a small container of it for like 9 to 10 bucks. I got the bigger container of it. It was like $15. And the reason I like this is because I can just put the core in there, let it sit for a couple of days if I want to, and it will not hurt it. And it doesn't have that really, really strong odor like the aircraft stripper does or anything like that. This stuff just works wonderful. And you get to sit here and watch it go down. <laughs> but it doesn't have that real sharp odor to it. It doesn't really have that really sharp smell to it or anything along those lines. And it's just, it's just easier to use because I could leave this sitting here all night with the top off of it. And my wife ain't going to complain. But if I'd use aircraft stripper inside the house... We'd all have to evacuate if I left it sitting like this for a while. <laughs> but there she goes. She has sucked up to her axles in the citrus strip or North Carolina red clay. I'm just going to refer, refer to it as North Carolina red clay for now. It's almost the same color. Bye bye. We'll see you tomorrow. Well now we can just take this and set it over to the side. And not have to worry about it. Like I said, there's no smell. There's no chemical residue. There's nothing. Nothing's going to happen with it. So we'll set that over to the side. Like I said, we're really not going to do anything to the base, per se. Look at that. See what I say about shavings? The wheels are okay because of the colors that I put on this. It will look like a hippie bus if it all works out. But we've got to figure out what we're going to do with this. I can prime it and paint it flat black, which is what I may have to do with it, but let's try something before that. I just want to put something on the inside to see if this is a colored plastic or a painted plastic. All right, bring this back out, got that. I'm gonna use a Q-tip and one of the greatest products for die cast you've ever seen in your life, Super Clean. If you don't know what super clean is you need to check it out and I'm not sponsored by them by no means I actually want a thing of this but I had bought one before I ever want it this is the one that I bought the one that I want is over there in the closet waiting on this one to run out but you could take super clean mix it 50% you know five uh, half water half super clean and that dilutes it but you can take a metal base I mean a plastic base or anything that has this chrome on it and it will take that chrome right off and if you if you can see real good right there around where that hole is where the screw went and the post went it's white and that's what it looks like underneath there but we're going to try it on a q-tip let me get my trash can so I can spray the q-tip without getting it everywhere is now saturated so let's just see I got a feeling I already know what the answer is but we're gonna give it a try just to see what happens I'm actually gonna get a blister from a car that I took apart a little while ago and of course it's got shavings in it <laughs> that's alright and we're going to rub it on there get on my finger so that'll take off on the front we're just going to rub it on here and let it sit for a little bit and see what happens I don't see anything coming off on the q-tip yet so that's a pretty good sign that it is a colored plastic rather than a painted plastic like the chrome base the chrome base is a painted chrome whereas this looks like it's an injected molded color 
plastic. In other words, it, the plastic itself is blue rather than being painted. So if that's the case, we'll have to go on to a different plan of attack. Which is fine. I'm gonna get it nice and wet. And then you come back in a minute. Alright, it's been about five minutes and I can already tell that it is actually injected molded or color plastic. It is not a painted plastic, so there is nothing on that at all. Nothing. No color, no nothing. So what that means for this project and I don't know how it's going to turn out because what I really need is like a bare metal what I think I will do is paint this gray maybe like a gray primer and then we will do the swirl paint or hydro paint if you will I'll just go ahead and tell you what we're doing now however you want to look at it however you want to call it it's good. I'll explain the process and everything when we get to it but at least that's what we're going to do so I'm going to paint this gray I'm going to have to super glue this to the top because it's in two pieces and then we will be able to paint it then I'm not going to tell you how just yet. You're going to have to watch the rest of the video. So we'll be back tomorrow the day after. And attach the two. We'll prime this. We'll attach the two. And then we will paint it. It's a very, very simple, easy process for painting. And then we'll go detail it out. You know, do the headlights. And do the brake lights. And whatever else we decide we want to do. But... It's going to take till tomorrow for that to strip off. So unfortunately, you're going to have to come back. So let's let's turn everything off, and we'll see you tomorrow. Twenty-four hours later. Boom! It's time. Matter of fact, it's way past time. So let's get to it. All right, let's get this piece out and see how it looks. There it is, and I just gotta grab it. Clamp it off so it doesn't fall back in. And it's just the top, you know, that's all it is. And I have figured out how I want to do this, so I'll walk you through it. But look at that, the paint just comes right off. And it's been sitting in here for two days because I've just been busy doing other things and just have not had time. And you can see that it does not hurt it one bit not one bit and we're just going to rip the excess back into the thing because no need wasting you know stuff's not expensive but there's no need just wasting stuff means you got to go buy some more quicker right we're just going to take all the excess rub it back in like that get that paint out of that window that's trying to go back in there But yeah, now we're going to take it in the bathroom. We're going to rinse it off with warm, soapy water. And we'll be back. Try my brush out. Final wipe on the top. And look at that. I mean, I did nothing but throw it in a strip. Brush it off with this. Old dollar store brush. that came out of a pack of like 10. And look at how good it looks. No picks. No brushes because I don't want to change the color of it and I'll show you why in a minute but yeah look at that again there's the top nice and clean posts are already drilled tapped all the good stuff now my plan was was I was hoping that the sides and the top were all metal but they were not sadly so you know we tried the acetone to see if it would change the color of the plastic like if it was like the base you know the base you can hit it and it'll turn white or take the chrome ring off but this 
nope this is actually a colored plastic so can't do that so here's my thoughts and I may be totally backwards for it but I'm just going to super glue these two pieces together right put a tab of super glue on the insides where it makes contact super glue it together then I'm going to spray prime the whole thing, this color gray. I'm gonna spray, I'm gonna prime everything gray. That way it's all one color. And then we will be able to, to hydro paint it. And you're gonna really like this. I mean, it's, it's not for everybody and it's, it, it kind of reminds me of painting with fire with the alcohol ink. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put a link to his channel in the description below and you can go check it out. You take the alcohol and put put a dab on there and light it on fire and then spray it and dry. It's pretty cool actually. But we're not playing with fire here. We're just going to be playing with paint. So I'm gonna glue this together and prime it, and we'll go from there. Now I'm assuming by the way it fits in here that it makes contact with that flat spot. So I'm gonna take my gel glue super glue and I'm just going to go right around that spot real gingerly putting some super glue okay, on all four of them really don't want it on the top because that's where the paint's going to be so we'll get that off of there spinning around Again, I don't want it on the top. And then we're just going to take this and see if it'll hold it on. Set it upside down. And while we've got it like this, try to rub off any that might have gotten on there. Set it upside down, just let it sit for a few minutes and come back and check. All right, so that ain't gonna hold. I'm gonna have to go down the sides where the sides actually make contact with the plastic. That's okay. Live and learn. Run a bead. Right down that side. Flip it around. Right down that side. And do it again. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. It's all glued together. So now, all we have to do is prime it. And we're going to have to wait till tomorrow to do that because it is now 11 o'clock and it's dark outside. I can't do it inside. I don't have a paint booth. So we'll see you in the next part. Let's get done. All right, as you can see, we got it all glued together. I'm not going to worry about priming the inside of it because it'll all be sealed off anyway. You'll never see it. So we're just going to paint the outside of it. So let's start off with primer. I've got the can all warmed up. Just hit it in light coats like always. Right? We'll let it dry for just a minute and then we'll come back and hit it again. All right, second coat. This one can be more wet. Down in those windows and everything. should do it now we'll take it in let it dry and then we'll hydro paint it 
All right, we've got this all primed up. As you can see, it's been sitting for a couple days. It's not mandatory to let it sit for a couple days, but I just did because I've been busy doing other things. But we've got it all primed up. Like I said, no need to worry about the inside. That's not going to affect anything. So now, let's get on to the next step. Now, I'm not certain how this is going to work over primer. I think it'll be fine. I know it works really good over bare metal. The paint wants to grab onto it. As far as something being primed, I'm not sure, so this is a first time. This might be a complete fail, but we're going to find out, right? And what you're going to need is something to put this in, or something, let me rephrase. What you're going to need is something large enough to be able to put, dip this whole body in without touching the sides and actually have room around the sides. So I'm going to try this to see if it's big enough. I'm going to cut it in half and but you also want to make sure is you have enough room to dunk it in. So we want to stay, you know, somewhere up around here. So let's get this big boy cut open. Take a hole. Take the scissors. Never thought when I started doing hot wheels I'd be doing arts and crafts. <laughs> Let's see how that looks. It'll go down in there. I was hoping that would be a little bit bigger. What we're going to do now is fill this up with water somewhere, you know, right around here, because once you dump the, the bus in there, it's going to make the water rise, so you don't want to overflow it on the work here. So, you know, just somewhere right around here will be fine. All right, we've got our thing full of water, and you don't want hot water, you don't want cold water, you want lukewarm or, or even room temperature water. We need a toothpick or something along the lines and a few paper towels. And of course the paint. And here's what's going to happen. This is the paints we're going to be using, right? Typical colors that you'd find on vans back in the day. And Kester's paint is an oil-based paint. So if you know anything about oil and water, they don't mix. So in theory, I'm going to take a few drops of the paint, put it in the water. It's going to spray it and stay on top of the water. Yes, you might get a few dye pigments or something that go down to the bottom, but that's no issue. The actual paint and the oil itself that is mixed will stay on top. So be sure to shake your paint well before you put it in the water. Then we're going to take the bus. We're going to drop it down in there. We're going to go like front, get it down real slow, and roll it. And then as we're going, we're going to keep submersing it. Once we get it down in there, we want to go past the paint. Then we're going to take a paper towel and, and try to get up as much as the excess paint as we can. That way when we pull it back out, it's, it's not messing up the paint on the, on the bus. That's in theory. So let's see what happens. Now I'll swap it over to my forceps because I can just handle this better rather than that third hand or helping hand rather. And I want a singular paper towel up here. So now I'm just going to mix my paints and put them in as I said. You just pick out the colors that you want. Doesn't matter, just you know, whatever kind of look you're going for. And we'll go from there. And of course, the top sticks to the bottle. That's all right. Set that down and use a Q-tip to poke it back down in there. All you're gonna do is just get you some paint on your toothpick and drop it in. And as you can see, it stays on the top. Once you get some of that in there, take your next color and do the same thing. And it's totally up to you on how you want to pattern this. I'm just going to mix it all together. 
Now, once you get, you have to visualize how you want your pattern to be. As you can see, I've got I, I took it and just dropped it in and mixed it all up. Do you want it to be lines? Do you want it to be more of a swirl tie dye type of paint? Because you can mix it up into any pattern that you want. It is so cool. But you can put lines, you can put stripes, whatever you want. But what we want is to try to get full coverage. So all this basically needs to be mixed. No air pockets or water bubbles, if you will. You want it to be all one type of coverage. And once you get it to where you think you want it, decide where, how you want your, your car to go in. I actually want some more of that black over this way. So all you have to do is just drag it wherever you think you want it. And then here we go. Like I said, we're just going to take it and start with the front. Go in and kind of roll it as we go. Push it all the way down. Take the paper towel and get as much of it up as we can. And then pull it out and see what we have. Let the excess run off, of course. And that's what we come up with, kind of like a tie-dye painted car. Pretty cool, actually. The only thing about it is, this painting method is, the colors will tend to run, but the cool thing about it is you get a, a cool effect as they run. Now all we have to do is set it over to the side and let this bad boy dry. Now keep in mind, this is going to take several days to dry. It'll, you know, because it's just going to continually drip from all the water and, and the, the extra paint that was on there because that was a pretty good bit of paint. But if you want to add an extra effect or something, just take your toothpick and grab a color, get it nice and dabbed in the paint, and just hold on and let it drip. And then that will cause a run. And you can put that anywhere you want. Let it go anywhere you want. It doesn't take much, just a dab will do you. And that is a little bit of extra pop to the paint. Because all this is just going to be like gra gravity is just going to grab it and pull it. And it's just going to, all these colors are going to run, they're going to merge. And actually that's what we're looking for because, you know, back in the day when they had the spray paints and everything, or the buckets of paint, and they went along and just hit their, their cars and their buses and stuff, they didn't have, you know, show quality paint jobs or anything. You just took what they had and mixed it and ran with it. Now what we'll do is we'll let this dry. Just let it drip. I put some plastic underneath the paper towel and you can actually help it wick a little bit if you want. Take it and touch it. But I don't like doing that because it causes it to kind of pull. Just I, I like to just let it drop. And all these colors will merge and create a one-of-a-kind color paint job and if you're not happy with it after it dries, come back and add a color to you know. But I'm actually liking the way this is looking pretty good. We'll see how it looks later. And we'll be back to paint the windows and put it all back together. So we'll see you then. Alright, here it is. The bus. We still got a little bit of touch up like the windows and stuff to do on it and all that good stuff. But here's how it turned out. I mean... Be aware that when you do this type of painting, yes, it's messy, it drips for a while, yes, it smells, but you can get some really, really stellar results out of it. I mean, it just looks cool, and then, like I said, you can come back, even after it's dried, and take some of the paint and put details on it. But why would you? I mean, just because it's enamel paint and everything, that just turned out really glossy, really shiny, and I think it turned out really good. So let's do some detail work on it. Plans are to paint the windows flat black, 
paint the headlights white the turn signals the amber color and of course do the brake lights of course you gotta shake your paint up and then of course you gotta open it up and as always that sticks but that's okay that's almost enough to paint the whole thing right there plug it back down in there Get some on toothpick and go to work. I think I'm gonna need a brush for this. Alright, give me a brush. Hopefully this isn't too big. And we are not looking for perfection with this <coughs> because of what it is. If it was a brand new type of touring van or something, yes, we'd want perfection. But since this is just an old raggedy, rundown type of van or bus that they're going to use to travel one town to the next, we don't really care how it looks. Matter of fact, the rougher the better. <laughs> And yes, I'm going to paint the tips of those also. But I'm going to go ahead and get the windows and we'll be back in a minute. Alright, we got the, the glass painted with flat black. As you can see, as it dries, it goes kind of gray. Which is really looking good. So now I need to do the headlights, turn signals, and the rear lights. And of course the lights up there. So let's get to that. For our headlights, we're going to need white. Hmm, that is stuck like Chuck. There we go. Now, some people, myself included, like to put down some gray or silver first. But because this is red, we're going to see how it looks. Going straight over it. Not too bad. Of course, I got a little bit of a run there, but. Not too much I can do about that without making it look bad. Alright, so there's that. Go ahead and close the white up while we give this a minute to dry because if you don't, using a toothpick or anything like that, if you turn it to the side, the paint will want to run. So we'll give this a minute to dry and be right back. Alright. So we got the white on, now let's do the amber. <clears throat> Ooh, that's definitely stuck. Let me get my pliers. And the reason I set my bottles off to the side like this is because we typically don't need the bottle. All we need is the little bit that's on the top. So by sticking the bottle out of the way, we stand less chance of knocking it over and making it a complete mess. That's why I do it. Get a little bit on there. A 
lightly test it on and you might have to come back and do this a couple times with that red you know if you decide to do something like this depends on what kind of look you're going for I actually like the faded out look like that but it's totally up to you you know these are your cars you do them how you want to my goal is just to do a few and show you some different things that you might not have seen before but if you look at that that looks pretty cool Now let's do the ones on the top. <clears throat> See how that gives a kind of a um, faded used look. Let it dry for just a second, put just a little bit more on or give it more of an orange look because yellow and red makes orange. I've given it a few minutes to dry. Now we're putting on the second coat. And if you learn your color wheel, you can actually make things look more realistic because like I said, if you take yellow and red that will give you orange the more red you go the darker the orange the more yellow you go the brighter the orange so by me taking a bright yellow and putting it over a dark red that gives you the kind of orange look like turn signals looks pretty cool don't it but let's let this dry for a minute and then we'll go on to the next color all right now we have to do the back ones as well so i would think Stop light, turn signal, backup light. At least that's how I see it. Now we're going to come back up to the front and we're going to use a little bit of silver just on this. We're not going to try to coat the whole thing. We're going to try to make it have a, <coughs> a little bit of a rough look to it. Almost like it was kind of spray painted over. Kind of like that look. You know, we don't want it perfect. We just want it showing through. Then we're going to do the same thing for the air horns. I know they're actually probably lights, but I'm going to call them air horns. I'm going to put a little dab right in the middle. Don't have to be perfect. Because perfection is actually not what we're looking for on this. Hmm. Completely different look to it now. But there you go, that's all there is to it. This joker is now finished. We got it back together. Still rolls like new because we didn't change anything. I might should have painted the base, but I decided not to. But overall, it's a pretty cool color effect. You can't get this type of effect with anything else. I mean, yeah, you can get something more dramatic by doing the alcohol ink method, but a lot of people don't want to mess with fire number one or two want to buy the expensive paint. I mean, you can get all the colors you need. Right? for five bucks and one thing at alcohol ink is about that price so that stated it turned out pretty good I mean I'm happy with it what do you guys think done a little detail work on the turn signals the lights the air horn painted all the windows custom paint on the exterior right the rear end of it like I said, if I had a, a wash, I would have washed down in here and made it a little darker. Not really worried about the base because that wasn't what this video was about. The video was about the paint itself. So now we have that done. Now we can move on to the next project. I think it turned out pretty dang cool. Put me a rough looking piece sign on the side like if you spray painted it. And yeah, 
60s and 70s all over again. <laughs> but there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And let's get on to the next one. Mm -hmm.